The year is 1815, medieval France. The skies darken, lightning flashes. Then from the turbulent storm clouds descend mystery airships. Their mission? To raid the local villages and take their ill-gotten loot back up to their hidden home base. And where exactly is that? A flying city of weather-controlling witches and sky pirates, of course, because the laws of the land don't apply in the sky. This is the sort of historical 9th century account that some ufologists point to as early evidence of extraterrestrial contact. Is there any truth to it? No, no there isn't. But let's just enjoy the story anyway. This is the history of Magonia, the Sky City. Beyond the frontiers of believability lie the outlands of myth and legend, where the supernatural becomes reality. If you can buy this, then join me now. Magonia has become a minor sensation featured in ufology books and a recent young adult novel series. But the original medieval account of the Flying City comes to us from the 9th century treatise On Hail and Thunder, written by Agobard, Archbishop of Lyon. In medieval France, terrible storms would sometimes ravage the farmlands, destroying the crops. It was said that flying ships from Magonia descended from the clouds. Aerial sailors would then emerge from within and gather up the fallen fruit and grain from the fields, stealing it to take back to their hidden cloud city. But the plot goes deeper than that. At the time, people believed there were magicians known as the Tempestari, or storm makers, who had the power to control the weather. The Magonians were in league with these weather wizards and paid them to summon the storms that damaged the crops in the first place. In later versions of the story, Magonia gained the reputation of an immoral city of thieves, of sky pirates. In Agobard's story, the Tempestari were earth-dwelling magicians, part of a long tradition of people who used witchcraft to control the weather. It was said that the farmers would pay the Tempestari tribute in the form of a portion of their crops to keep the storms away. However, if a storm nonetheless did strike, the angry villagers might murder the wizard in retaliation. In the 19th century, Charles Godfrey Leland offers a different version of the legend. For there is in the sky another world made by wizards and witches who, when they died, were not admitted to heaven. And so they made a world for themselves, which has a sea in it. And when the weather is dark and clouds fly before the storm, those clouds are boats full of hail, and in them are wizards and witches who throw the hail at one another, and so it falls to earth and does great harm. The Tempestari lived in Magonia and manufactured hailstones, which were then loaded into the holds of the cloud ships. Sometimes the hail men of Magonia got creative and shaped hailstones to resemble human heads. For example, Leland recounts a mysterious fall of pebble-sized hailstones in 1395 that bore human faces, both male and female. Agobard of Lyon writes of an incident where four people, three men and one woman, were captured by an angry mob of villagers, accused of being evil Magonians who fell from their skyship. Now, embellishments made by ancient alien theorists would have you believe that these four prisoners were Martians or Greys. But that's not what Agobard wrote. He writes that he saved the hostages because they weren't really from Magonia. They were just victims of panic and paranoia. So let's look at the actual writings of Agobard of Lyon. 
the original and only medieval source for the information on Magonia. Here's what he wrote, translated from the Latin. We have seen and heard of many people overcome with such foolishness, made crazy by so much stupidity, that they believe and say that there is a certain region which is called Magonia, from which ships come in the clouds. Among those so blinded with profound stupidity that they believe these things could happen. Okay, I should pause for a moment and point out that this is the primary and only source for Magonia, and it's telling us that we'd have to be stupid idiots to believe in it. Anyway, Agobard, who was a bishop after all, goes on to quote scripture, a lot of scripture, and complains about how people will believe in the Tempestari enough to pay them for storm protection, but won't properly tithe to the church like they're supposed to. That's what this whole treatise is actually about, complaining about the ridiculous things that people believe in. And what of the others who came later to elaborate on the myth? Well, if you read the books of Charles Godfrey Leland, whom we quoted earlier on witches, wizards, and hailstones, it's clear that he's more interested in luxuriating in the whimsy of this fantastical tale, rather than treating Magonia as a real place. And after all, isn't that why we're here too? So let's end this video with a quote from Leland. Reader, is there not a charm in this conception? And will you not sometimes recall it when you sit at evening and look at the rosy golden sunset? It may be at the trysting tree. And see the cloudlets steering in the fiery sea, and wish that you too could take passage therein for the beautiful, far away, forgotten city. For Magonia, whose walls are of aerial amethyst and citadels of vapory emerald, floating away, away and ever on, gleaming in glory on the heavenly plain, blending in darkness, glittering in rain, and in hail diamonds, seeking earth again, mingling and changing, like all things forever. Hey, you know what else changes like all things forever? The videos on our YouTube channel. So check it out and subscribe. We'll be back soon with another episode of Lore Unbelievable.